Welcome back to Chat with the Chamber, the official podcast of the Campbell County Chamber of Commerce. This episode is brought to you by our generous sponsor, Coffee Beanery. Good morning. My name is Tracy Matthews and welcome to Chat with the Chamber. Today we're here with my very good friend, Larry Miller. <laughs> All right. That's got a lot of mileage out of that one. Boy, one I actually got a type. phone call on that. <laughs> yeah. So my very good friend Tyler Miller is here. He's with Earthwork Solutions. So I wanted to talk to you about your business, Tyler. Um, so talk to me, what does Earthwork Solution actually do? Well, we're a heavy equipment contractor. Okay. And as our name would allude to, we do Earthwork. So we do site development, we do utilities, um, any projects really that involve large quantities of moving earth is mm -hmm. what we do. Um, you know, we stay out of the residential stuff. There's never, you know, big dirt jobs in residential. We don't really get into commercial aspects either, but we do like heavy industrial, mining, oil, gas, uh, Bureau of Rec, uh, AML, any, any big projects that have large, large quantities of dirt to move. We do a lot of landfills. Um, they, they always have a, have a lot of dirt to dig out. And so that's one of our specialties. Don't you do aggregate as well? And what is aggregate? Sure, we, we do aggregate as well. Um, we actually only have a couple of active pits. So what you're referring to is what we had, like Senator Barrasso ran mm -hmm. his campaign ads on. Uh, we used to produce a high friction surface treatment and we distributed it all over the country. Um, most notable was probably when we um, provided all the high friction surface treatment for LaGuardia Airport in New York for three years because they couldn't extend the length of their runway, so they had to make planes stop faster. So they added our high friction surface treatment to the runways, which would give them more traction to, to decelerate quicker. Um, it was a great, great opportunity. Um, unfortunately, we just could not overcome uh, the China product coming in and as much as I thought, uh, you know, under the Trump eras that that would, that would come to a kibosh, we persevered, um, we fought it. But what ultimately I ended up spending about 70% of my time doing about 10% of our revenue. And so it was just a business decision that, you know, I was trying to fit a square peg into a round hole and I was trying and I tried for 10 years and I traveled all over the country. I met with um, probably 40 Department of Transportation labs and uh, materials departments and uh, got to see the whole country. So, I mean, that, that was a good takeaway, but yeah. ultimately it was just, it, it was a better business decision just to divest from that and unless something changed in the market, probably not going back into that. So how many places does Earthwork Solution work? Um, well, we actually currently are working all in Wyoming, um, mostly not in Gillette, surprisingly, that's where, that's just where our headquarters are. Um, we are currently working in Bill, Wheatland, Dubois, two big projects in Kemmerer, and then, uh, quite a bit of work going on down in the Douglas area with oil and gas development. So. That's, that's where we're currently working. Um, last year, we had a great project out in Upper Washington, the farthest point you could get in Northeast United States. So there was actually a sign that let you know that you are, you're at that point. So, which was pretty cool, um, working for, on an Indian reservation for the FAA, um, getting a road repaired so they could get to their tower that controls all the communication um, across the Pacific Ocean for FAA. So that was a fun project that we did last year. Um, sometimes our work will take us down to Texas. So we're, we surround ourselves with a lot of good clients and we take really good care of them, um, keep them happy. And in return, they, they uh, invite us to do very cool projects wherever in other areas that they work. Love it. So. Well, what is the project that you're working on in Kimmer? In Kimmer, um, there's a new, nuclear facility it will be the first 
nuclear facility coming in, actually of, of its kind, um, but first nuclear facility coming into Wyoming. So, um, yeah, that's the big news. So That's so exciting that you get to be part of that legacy. It is. It, it, yeah, it's great. Um, it, it feels, um, you know, just like quite the accomplishment that we are able to go down there and, you know, here's a company in Gillette, Wyoming, and, you know, the first project, first nuclear project come into Wyoming, and here you go, we get to do it as a Wyoming contractor. Yeah. So, how did you learn about the project, and what was it like to go through the process of being awarded that? We learned about it because, um, oh, I think it was back in 2021, TerraPower, um, which is owned by Bill Gates, he made an announcement and said, you know, he's bringing, going to bring in a nuclear facility into Wyoming. And at that point in time, there was buzz about he is, uh, there is a partner in like Rocky Mountain Power and Pacific Corp, I believe the owner. Um, of those facilities. And so they were going to shut down one of those sites and Gillette was actually one of them that they were, they were entertaining. So there was a lot of talk in Gillette about, you know, out at the Wyatt Act facility, shutting down one of those Pacific Corp units. Um, there was another one down, I believe in Glen Rock. And then there was the one in Kemmerer. And so that was out, the verdict was out on which one they were going to shut down because it will affect, you know, the, the local economies and, Anyway, it was determined that that was going to be the Kemmerer facility. So, um, anyway, we, we had that on our radar since all that hoopla was going on. So, we knew something was going, going to happen. And so, um, our business develop, ma development manager, Shay Lundball, also the city mayor. Mm -hmm. um, so, he was he's really perseverant, great communicator, and really just stuck to it. So one thing about old Shay, he, he doesn't let it rest until he gets the answer he's after. So uh, it worked out really well. He, you know, just continuously pursued those guys. And, you know, a lot of times we had to have those talks like, we got to keep going. Like, you know, we don't have the job right now. So really, what do we have to lose? Like, let's, you know, sometimes, you know, we need to make people uncomfortable like until we get the answer I mean, if the answer is no the answer is no they're not going to choose us either way this one we didn't have that answer so um we were just very persistent um actually it it took um getting the governor's office involved um with this to get to a seat at the table so we weren't we wouldn't um hindsight we would not have had that if it wouldn't have been for that perseverance and and the help of the governor's office getting involved saying, this is a Wyoming project. We want to have Wyoming people working on this project. So um, it, that's how we ended up getting it. Just a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of perseverance and then, and then reach out and get some aid from, from the high, some of the higher authorities that have a little influence also. I love that. Yeah. Visit Coffee Beanery today and enjoy cozy atmosphere and friendly service located right here in Campbell County. It's the community's favorite spot for quality coffee and tasty meals. What is the positive impact of this project being performed by Wyoming contractors? So all of our employees are Wyoming workers. So um, instead of having a larger company, because this is going, this is a huge project. Um, Bill Gates put a billion dollars into it. That's matched by the Department of Energy. So it's two plus billion dollars anyway. I don't know what the ultimate price tag is going to be on that project. But that's a lot of revenue and having it having a lot of that work being performed by Wyoming contractors means that that money, all that revenue, the payroll, the taxes, um, the people that live and, you know, purchase all their merchandise in Wyoming. I mean, all that stays here because some of these large projects, you know, that one, um, there were some large contractors that were going after that project to get it. Um, and actually that's why, you know, looking back on the fact that we're doing, you know, the, we're doing all the site, site development utilities, um, and that scope of work continues to grow. So, 
um, and hopefully it continues to grow until the project um, is done in like seven years. I think it's supposed to be done in supposed to be producing electricity in uh, 2030. And so, I mean, that's a long time for, you know, Wyoming people to be there, you know, keeping that money in Wyoming. Yeah. There's companies that come from all over the country, large companies that would come and, you know, they do much more work, much more notable jobs than we do. So they've got a resume that won't quit. And so it's easy for a company um, to choose them over us. So um, it's nice just to have it here. So we keep those dollars in Wyoming and I'm, keep people working here and living here. I love that for you because the plan is to add multiple. Yeah. And so you're going to be at the top of the list now. Right. For all I mean, that work. Once you get in and understand the process. So um, Terra Power is the owner. Terra Power is the, is the top, top of the food chain right there with that particular project. Um, we reached out to the president of, we weren't able to get through uh, enough of the gates to talk, talk to Bill Gates enough of the, uh, there was enough roadblocks in front. We couldn't talk to, to Bill about, you know, wanting to do the project, but we did talk to Chris Levesque, that's the president of Terra Power and let him know. And we've met Chris and, and voiced the fact that we, we want to do that project for him. So, they're the owners, but they hired Bechtel, which is Bechtel is the largest contractor in the world. Um, they hired Bechtel to be the general contractor. So they're, they're overseeing all of the construction for that project. And so we are actually um, a subcontractor to Bechtel for doing all of the site work. So there's a lot of specialties along with this project, um, you know, specialty concrete, specialty pumps, specialty you know, everything that goes into nuclear special. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's not stuff that we do. So they have other entities. and But hopefully these uh, other Wyoming companies see that, you know, hey, there's Earthwork Solutions. We see them out there. We see their signs. We see them, you know, in the news that they're working out there. We can do that too, you yeah. know? So, yeah. That's awesome. What is so unique about this particular project? So most nuclear projects, power plants, and that's why you have a nuclear project, you have a nuclear power plant to generate electricity. Um, the other ones that are in the United States, that are throughout the United States, there's a number of them, of nuclear plants, um, you know, around the world and, and in the United States. And the unique, unique thing about this is this will be the first one that's in the United States that is not um, dependent on water cooling. So this is being cooled by molten sodium. So molten salt. So I don't know what the melting point of salt is. I haven't got it that hot, but you have to get it into a molten state and then it is going to be cooling down that reaction that's happening. That doesn't make sense in my it, head. It that does. Molten equals cool. Molten <laughs> equals cooling. Yeah. That molten is going to be molten over here is going to be cooler than this over here that will take heat and dissipate it in here to cool it down enough to keep the process going. They still are going to use some water, but it's just going to be in their process. It's not necessarily, it may be like a secondary cooling or um, <clears throat> these sodium. So that's why it's called natrium. Terra Power is the owner. It's the natrium. Uh, it'll be their unit one. Right now we're working on the test fill facility. Um, but natrium is the name of the project. And natrium comes from sodium, which is Na on the periodic table. So, um, Don't make me flash back to high school. Time. Yeah, I know. That was a quick, <laughs> quick chemistry lesson right there. I know. Um, but anyway, th this is going to use this process. It's going to be a lot cheaper to build. And then you don't need to be next to a big mass body of water because all these other ones are sitting on, on some big lake, some big river, some big water body that they need because they need all that water to cool them down. So this is going to be the first um, process. And once they get this one established, um, they're wanting to rinse and repeat and do these, um, you know, all over the place. 
Which is amazing since we don't have a lot of water in Wyoming. Right. So, so this is just a different process that doesn't require that much. And so there's a lot of places that could use this that have, um, you know, that are, because I hate to say it. I mean, we're, here we are in, in Northeast Wyoming, energy capital of the world. I mean, I've worked coal mining and, you know, been in that my whole life. So, um, but there are things that are beyond our control and what some of these public utilities say, you know, we're going to diversify our portfolio and we're going to reduce our carbon footprint. I mean, when they say that, there's nothing that we can do. And, you know, if that means that they're going to put up a nuclear plant, then we want to be involved and, you know, get our piece of that business. Absolutely. Yeah. We know that nobody wants thermal coal to go away, but we just don't have control over that. Correct. So, um, how you touched on this a little bit, but how long do you expect to be working on this particular project? Well, I would like to be working on it for the next seven years is what I would like. Um, they, our, our project, our first scope of work is slated to be done at the end of this year. But we are already working on other scopes of that work, which would extend it um, another, extend it till the end of uh, 2026 right now is what we're working on. So there's just a lot of different, they take this great big project and they break it down into parts and pieces. And so as the project progresses, they make several other awards for different aspects. So, I mean, they're, they're going to have dirt work to do at the very end. I mean, we have temporary roads out there for all their contractors to come in and park all their, all their vehicles. They're going to have up to 1,600 people working there every day um, when this thing's in the swing. You know, and Kemmer has a population of like 4,300 or something. Like, I mean, that's, that's a big impact. Yeah, it is. So you have to have places for all these people to go, and they park when they come to the job site. Um, so you have all these temporary facilities that, um, and roads and parking and things like that that they don't need after they're done. So, I mean, the dirt guys are always the first in and the last out. Yeah, kind of like army guys or something like that. <laughs> do you see this leading into other opportunities for Earthwork Solutions? I do. Um, yep, we've had, we've had a, additional connections, contacts um, with Bechtel on other projects that they have going on. Um, most notably and direct was the uh, ground-based strategic defense program uh, that they have out of, kind of out of Cheyenne. It's headquartered out of Hill Air Force Base in Utah. Um, we got selected to uh, be on teams of that. So they had Northrop Grumman, they had Boeing, and they had Lockheed Martin were the three contenders that were uh, qualified with the U.S. Department of Defense to put in, replace the Minuteman missiles with the Sentinel missiles. So they go from northern Colorado, throughout eastern Wyoming, up into South Dakota, North Dakota, and in Montana. So that's where our whole intercontinental um, ground-based strategic defense program lies. But they're upgrading all those Minuteman missiles. So this project's a 30-year project. And, um, we found out about it because Boeing called my called our office. Well, and that's because um, Senator Brasso told Boeing that said, hey, there's a good company in Wyoming that I think should be involved with your proposal when you go after that project. So Boeing and Northrop Grumman both um, solicited us. We interviewed with both those entities. Um, they put us on their design, on their uh, proposal for doing that when they presented that to the federal government. And Boeing got got kicked out because they were having some problems with some of their planes and Lockheed Martin was having some issues with the government. So um, Northrop Grumman actually got that that contract. And so it's there's parts and pieces that are in the making now, but it's a lot of engineering and design work. Um, but that, that project's slated to be done in like 2050, I think is when they're supposed to have that thing done. Anyway, long story short, Bechtel was named as the general contractor on that for Northrop Grumman. So we started, we've had conversations with Bechtel on other projects to work on. 
So that that's a pretty cool project too. Yeah, so, you're gonna go see more in the world. Aren't yeah, you? you'll see 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 other stuff. But Bechtel, I mean, being the largest contractor in in the world, I mean, they have projects all over the place. So I think that that's opening the doors, especially when they see that we're qualified and we can perform well. We are a non-union shop, and so I think a lot of times that separates, you know, the speed and dexterity at which processes can happen. Um, our workers are super excited to be working on a high-profile job, so they really are just getting it every day and making us look good. I love this for you. Um, how many people do you employ? Uh, we're, we're actually 70, so we're, we're really not... We're really not that big. We do have some, you know, like for our trucking on this project, we have to bring in a lot of materials. So we'll subcontract out some of that work. Um, we have a fencing contractor starting down there Monday. Just some of the specialized stuff we'll, we'll subcontract, you know, also out to guys that uh, just that's in their wheelhouse and that we can share that with other Wyoming contractors. So, yeah. Awesome. Yep. Anything else that you would like the chamber membership to know about earthwork solution uh, just remember we're here in camel county this is where we started and um, you know it we used to do a lot of mining work and and oil and gas that was right here in camel county we never we never used to travel outside of camel county but if we didn't i mean like we would be very small and very poor if we were still you know still alive there there's a lot of competition, um, and so diversification is what it took for us to, you know, really see what was what was beyond our our boundaries, which were really limited to Campbell County. And so it's, um, you know, don't be afraid to to look outside and see other areas. And I mean, there's a lot of as being involved with economic development, you know, there's a lot of opportunities that you can, you know, we we want it all to be in Campbell County but sometimes it, it takes reaching out to um, some other areas to expand the market. Coffee Beanery has got you covered with a wide range of options to choose from. It's the perfect spot to start your day or take a midday break. And then lastly, um, talk to me about some of the different boards that you sit on in Campbell County because I know you to be such a community-minded person and um, those kind of people never brag about themselves but I'd kind of like to hear your <laughs> humble brag well um, I, I always like being involved and helping out and I mean it started it started in like junior high being involved in student council and just active in clubs that they had and and I mean that's gone all the way through through college I mean I, I was involved in the fraternity I was involved in engineering clubs we built concrete canoes and for the um, the ASME for or ASCE, the American Society of Civil Engineers. We built concrete canoes and, and raced concrete canoes with other colleges, which was which was fun. But I, I've always been engaged. I like the social aspect. I like helping people. I like networking and just you know having something to go do outside of like work. You know, so you're you to talk, you network, you just learn about different things and what other people do and, and help help people along the way. Um, so, you know, in Gillette, I, I got really involved with the Society of Mining Engineers. Um, I've been involved with Society of Mining Engineers for about 22 years now, and I've been president for the last 16 years. So, because I, I've haven't had, well, what happened was once I, I got into it as the president, um, I got in right when there was a, a hiccup in 2008 that uh, really significantly impacted and shook up our coal, coal markets. And so people started bailing, especially management people that were in that group. And so, um, so our board just kind of, they took different jobs, other places. And so they just weren't no longer in our community. And, um, you know, it was just hard to get people involved in that. So we, we do a golf tournament, all that money goes raised or the golf tournament every year goes to scholarships to like eight to 12 kids every year. Um, that, and so 
do the golf tournament and go do that. So that's our, my SME hat that I participate. Um, then I got involved with economic development. Um, I've been involved with economic development for the last eight years, and I've been, for the last two years, been um, president of the board for the economic development. Um, the Gillette Rotary Club, I've been involved with that. I've been president twice and through the board twice um, with the Rotary Club, and I just, that one gives back so much to our community. I mean, that one's near and dear um, to me. We do great things globally. Um, I've personally um, gone on projects to like Nicaragua with my mom and my son, Mason, Mike Smith, and his son um, went over there and rebuilt a toilet for a elementary school that didn't have, they had a toilet, but they condemned it. So it was chained lock with a paddle lock and they said chains around doors so the kids couldn't, so the kids had to walk to school. And then once they walked to school, there was nowhere for them to go to the bathroom at all. So we went down and put a new septic, it started out, put a new septic system into it, um, built all the foundation for, and that's where we had to stop. So we had limited number of days. There was gonna be another crew that came in after us of volunteers to put a structure on top of the concrete pad that we did and we did all the plumbing and the dirty work to it. But anyway, so it's established a, a restroom for the school, which was, which was just, I mean, it's my son, which we travel all over the place and done a number of things. He's like, dad, that was my, that was my favorite vacation I've ever been on. So, which was very, very good to hear as a parent. So, um, and then we do Rotary, the Gillette Rotary Club does so many good things for our community. I mean, down at the Fishing Lake, we have Rotary Point where we've, we've put up, we put up the shelter, we put up the bridge that crosses down, crosses from one side of the other to the other of the lake. Um, you know, that was one of the first projects they did down there. Then the shelter, then the toilets down there, and then the playground. And the playground was in need, of, like it was in disrepair and... Um, four years ago now, uh, we went to the city and said, hey, we want to add, we want to spruce this up. We want to add another, you know, nice piece of, to this playground. Take, take something out and put another nice piece in there. And they said, oh, actually, that's on our list of playgrounds that we're getting rid of. And we're like, that's our, that's Rotary Point. Like, that's where, that's our area. Don't mess with our area, you know? So, anyway reported that back to the club and said, hey, if you guys know anybody, let's let's start, you know, turning up the temperature on this thing because they're talking about getting rid of the playground at Rotary Point. So anyway, the city came up with um, some funding and they said, we'll buy the equipment to turn make this whole playground, you know, ADA accessible, accessible uh, equipment, new stuff, the same brand of stuff that the city has throughout their other parks. But they said, you guys have to put it all together. And so we just within our club, we went in, um, you know, Earthwork Solutions volunteered the equipment time to tear out all the old stuff. Um, Land Serving Incorporated, they surveyed in all the foundations for, you know, where every pole in the whole playground goes. Um, we augured the holes out. Um, we would have work nights where we would just assemble all these, as much as we could in a shop. And then we'd put it on a trailer and haul these big pieces out to, to um, assemble them in the field. And so then we, I mean, it took us like six months of working on this thing because we could only do it on nights, like on our normal rotary nights. And on weekends, we'd have work times and so anyway, we finally got this, this awesome playground into fruition. And we recently purchased um, four cornhole boards that are the concrete. They're concrete, so they just stay outside. They're, they weigh like, I think, 700 pounds per, um, per, so that you don't, I mean, they don't move. So, yep, we purchased those. We went and got them. We had concrete pads poured, Ladkey Construction donated the pads, and then we went and sat up those down at the city. And um, the city was like, man, we always wanted these. We just can't get them in our budget. They always get cut out of our budget. So we were able to do that. Um, the playground that we put in, there was not a barrier between the playground and the parking lot. 
And so one of our members was like, boy, a car, could, you hear about cars running into buildings. I mean, imagine a playground full of kids, you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, we're like, oh, let's make that another project. So we went and got a bunch of concrete barriers. And so we built them. That was another work night. We just put a bunch of concrete barriers in so that cars couldn't run into the parking lot. So anyway, that that's what Rotary, Rotary does great things. And that's just, you know, lasting legacies and whole nother uh, area of, or, Lasting Legacy Park down there. We've done mm-hmm. the Rotary Club's done a number of amazing. I mean, they developed all that that area down there. Most of the stuff down there is done by Gillette Rotary Club through the years of, you know, all all the old guys. You know, that was where they they were doing their work. So great organization. So um, d- give back a lot to the community through uh, the Rotary Club. And then um, I got on the Yes House Foundation board. Um, Got on that one because I knew Jessica Cedars through economic development and I had just had my last, the first time I I was president um, and I was actually, it was my last meeting of being past president. I'm leaving my, my board meeting and I'm like, I'm done. You know, I don't have any more meetings. I left there and Jessica Cedar calls me, Tyler, I really want you on our board for the, um, Yes, House Foundation. And I'm like, well, I guess I just got off another one, so I don't have to do that one, so I guess I'll, I'll just swap it. So I was making it, making it work anyway. So anyway, that's been a, you know, Yes, House Foundation. We have our Dancing with the Gillette Stars. Um, that's our biggest fundraiser. We just support the Yes, House um, being the foundation, being um, the funding arm of the, the Yes House, which is a diamond in the rough for Campbell County. I mean, we're one of only three um, facilities that can um, manage the problems of the, the youth have in the community. And um, we were instrumental with uh, adding the Brook Street in as a, as a component of the Yes House to help those kids that graduate from the Yes House, they age out of the Yes House, but they don't really age out of problems. And so they just need a little bit more help. And so we are able to do that and extend that, that service that we can provide to the kids that need it. And so it's, that's another amazing um, group. And I mean, I'm just fortunate. I like that. It's, I, I like participating in those things, you know, more than I like being at work. <laughs> Uh, especially when I'm doing paperwork and things like that, you know, but, um, so it's, it's sometimes it's a lot, but it's all manageable and it's good. You make great relationships and know that you're doing good in the community. So that's what, well, I want to thank you for everything that you do for our community. It doesn't go unnoticed. Sure. Well, thank you. So We'll wrap it up. This has been Chat with the Chamber with Tyler Miller. Tyler Miller with Earthwork Solutions. All right. Thanks, Tracy. (laughs) Thank you.